How y'all doing? Don back here again. And today it's time to learn how to handle those pesky little errors. Uh, this is going to be pretty straightforward because, as you may have noticed, if you've used Go for any little bit so far, uh, Go is kind of opinionated about how you handle errors. Uh, it doesn't have um, exceptions like a lot of other languages, and it doesn't even have try catch box. Instead, what it has is there is a built in type in the language that is called error. And your functions and things that you execute can return something of type error. And if there's an error, you're expected to handle it, do something with it if it happens. So what we're gonna do is, whoops, I'm over here. Let me go, I'm just gonna write uh, two little functions here that we're gonna do. Uh, one is gonna be called func do error with no arguments. And it's gonna return a string and an error. And you know, the ordering here is kind of important. You don't have to have your arguments ordered this way, but it's, it's idiomatic in Go that if you have a function or a method that one of the return types is an error, that the error is the last thing in the list of um, return values. So I'm just going to do return empty string like this. And the first way to create an error is in the errors package. So errors. There is a function called new, which will just return or as a return type of error. And you pass into it a string representing the message contained within the error. So I'm just going to say this is my error, like that. And I'm just going to do, um, see, response error equals do error. And you will see this and go code all over the place because it's, it's, it's a very straightforward way to do it. And then um, error, the way error works is it's zero value is nil. We'll see why it's nil here in a little bit. But the way to check if there was an error from your function is your do if error, or whatever you called your, the, the variable you stored the error in. It's idiomatic that generally you store it in a variable called like ERR or error or something. Uh, is not equal to nil, then there was an error, do something. So I'm just going to do uh, log.printf. Uh, there was an error, uh, percent B, new, oops, new line, and pass in the error that way. Then I'm going to say uh, fmt.println, my message is response, which obviously will be empty because there's nothing here. So I'm just going to run this, and you'll see... There was an error, this is my error, because I ran a function that did actually return an error. So let's return one that doesn't return an error. So we're gonna do func do no error, like that. And it's gonna return the same types of arguments. And this one's gonna return, return uh, my response and nil. If you have a function that is that says it can return an error and <laughs> through the through the execution, it is not going to return an error. You just return nil. So we're going to go down here and we're going to do response error equals do no error. And then we'll do the same thing if error e not equal nil. Uh, you'll see a lot of people, if they use go a lot, they'll tend to write something that does this if error does not equal nil check for them because you will do it so much that you'll just you'll just want to do it and we'll do log.printf uh, this should not print because this the error will be nil here and it will not show up and we're going to say fmt.println of uh, my response and response so what we should see here is we should see the first one that there is an error and then the second time we should not actually see an error. Yeah, so second time because we passed back nil as an error, there was no indicating there was no error. So uh, what if we have a, uh, we want to provide a little more information from our error. Because uh, uh, errors.new is generally pretty good if you're just kind of returning like a simple information. Uh, but there's a way to return a little more information, and that is um, the FMT package that you usually use to print, you know, things out to the console and stuff. Um, actually, has a function in it called error f, which formats a string using the same like printf formatting syntax, 
but returns it as type error instead of as a string. So we're gonna do uh, do uh, FMT error. And I'm just gonna return an error this time, like this. And I'm gonna return fmt.error. Actually, let's just declare a variable here. So I'm gonna say, uh, what are we gonna do? Let's, let's, let's do a number. Let's do like, like an error code. Let's do error code equals 401. Kind of like a HTTP error code. And it's gonna be, um, this is my error code, percent D and error code like that so i'm gonna go down here and i'm gonna go uh, error equals do fmt error and then if error does not equal oops does not equal see what i mean mill uh, log dot print f there was an error percent b new line error so when i run this again there should be an error Oops, oops, it's error F, not error, genius. Back here, F, like that. Whoopsie daisy, there you go. So you see here now there's an extra error, and you'll see that it returned a formatted string that like like you would get if you do like print F or S print F or something like that. Now, the these two ways will get you through the large bulk of what you're gonna be doing a lot of times ago. But let's um let's look at something. So the errors v zero value is nil, right? Well, let's find out why that's actually nil. So if we go to this little this is blog post. It's on the main go lang side. If we go down here, you'll see that the error type, as defined in the standard and uh, uh, built in the language, is actually the interface. And uh, if you've no if you've done little know a little bit more about the uh, how the zero values of different types in Go is, you'll realize that the zero value of an interface is nil. So and you'll notice that this error interface, all it is defining is a method called error that returns a string. So that means in order for us to create our own errors, all we have to do on any type that we uh, create ourselves is implement this method onto it and then ta-da, you can use it as an error. Pretty straightforward, right? And you'll see that when you call errors.new, all it's actually doing is returning this unexported error string struct that has that message you passed in assigned to this property. And then the error method defined on that error string, it just returns that string on that's a, that's attached to the struct. So we're gonna I'm gonna show you something that I already pre-wrote and I'm going to explain it a little bit. So edit example. Yeah. So this is gonna be a little bit. Let me explain this. So I have created my own error types, essentially. And the reason I've created these is I want to contain within them some additional information that I could use for debugging. Um, I, these error codes, these error types that I've created kind of mimic an OAuth workflow where you have to, you have a, your auth code that you exchange for an access and a refresh token. And you need to use the access token to access private information on the service, and then you use the refresh token to get a new version of your access token, et cetera, et cetera. So you'll see that I will have three types here. I have error, access token, and valid, and I'm putting in here the URL that I was trying to uh, use during this request, um, the error code that I got back, and then the error message. Now, I'm not actually doing any HTTP requests. I'm kind of faking them, essentially. And you'll see here on the error uh, or on this struct, I have defined on it that method called error that returns a string. And what it does, it just runs fmt s print f on this string, putting in the details that I gave to it. And then there is error refresh token invalid. And the error is just kind of a little different. Um, Again, has that error method defined on it, then error auth code invalid. Again, these all look kind of similar. So if we go down here, I have a couple of functions that are basically just uh, mimicking that I tried to do something and it failed and gave me back a, an error. So you see that instead of me using like errors.new or fmt.errorf, when I'm returning these error, I'm literally just creating a new instance of this struct. Let's see, I'm returning error access token invalid and i'm passing in the url 
um, the the response code and what the response message was. This is this is not actually that dissimilar from a response you would get from an API that uses OAuth. Um, I know that because I was recently working on a Go package to interact with Restream's API. And then we have one for refresh and one for the auth code. So I have um, this main function here and all it's doing is it has defined two URLs. There's a resource URL, which is what something you would use when you need to provide an access token. And then we have token URL, which is what an in, and it type of an endpoint that you would have to interact with to either exchange your auth code or your refresh token for an access token. And you'll see that I'm just um, I'm just running run access token with the URL, and I pass in this boolean to say like you know tell it to to, to fail, and then I'm just printing out what the error actually was. So let's see if this actually works because you know you'll notice that all of these functions say they return a type of error. So if I run go run example, and we look at this, you will see that all of these did indeed return errors it, it it did not say that uh me returning those structs was wrong for returning an error and when you actually uh print out the string relating to the error you'll see could not access resource which is the first part and then uh error so the way this works is whenever you're doing like print f or something with errors only thing that it does is just call the error function from the struct to get the string. That's literally all it does. And you'll see we have the message we set here, invalid access token, URL, the URL we used, response code 401, response access token expired, and so on with the refresh token, and so on with the auth code. So uh, that's, that's all you have to do to make your own errors in Go is just implement the, uh, a method on the type called error that returns a string. That's it. Ta da. You've created your own errors. Um, that's, that's really all there is to error handling in Go since it doesn't allow you to do things like try catch and there's no exceptions. Um, uh, if you, uh, there, there's some other things, especially in this article, that talk about ways to um, kind of reduce the redundancy of having to constantly go if error does not equal nil, blah, 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 blah. Stuff, some things that would be handy if you're really, really having to do that a lot. Something else it mentions on here that I didn't show off in this is uh, something that may be useful when you're creating your own types is you could actually do um, some uh, do some yeah some type assertion. So if you say you are running a function and it may return a couple different types that all implement error, you could do like a switch on the type to do different things depending on what type of error it was. Uh, that's all I got for you today. Uh, if you liked the video, uh, be sure to share it in case you think you think it'd be help anybody else. Um, be sure to uh, subscribe or follow wherever you're watching this at. Uh, if you would like to uh, support the channel and these tutorial videos, I should have a link uh, wherever again this is posted down below. Uh, if you would like to follow me on other platforms, I got links down there for that somewhere as well. And with that, y'all come on back now, and I'll see you next time.